where he, we decided, although this meeting is going to really focus on the new recommendations on self-testing and partner notification, we thought we'd just give you a little recap of what's in the consolidated guidelines. And I want you to think, as, you go, as we go through this and you think about the new recommendations, also think about um, the other, other modalities of testing in your country and are there things that you need to do as well that we can help you with that you, that you need to focus on um, um, ab um, above and beyond the new recommendations. In your um, bag, you will have a copy of our consolidated guidelines as well as the supplement. Um, and um, um, as well as as well as the uh, policy briefs, um, for the francophone um, um, colleagues, I have um, the two new policy briefs in French. So please pop and see me if you'd like those um, as well. I wanted to start um, with this first picture here, again highlighting why why we're in Kenya, and it highlights one of my um, real passions, and that's football. Um, and this is a, a, a picture of, of testing um, at a football tournament. Um, and uh, I thought this was really fitting as a way to get men. And certainly Kenya, like many places in, uh, in, in sub-Saharan Africa, football is, is a great way of, of reaching men. Um, and uh, I thought this was rather fun and uh, um, an innovative way of, of reaching men. So, as we all know, we've done fantastically on treatment. We really have. Um, uh, who would have believed it five years ago that we could be really getting towards um, uh, uh, getting everybody with HIV on treatment? Um, but as we scale up treatment, we haven't had that great impact on reducing new infections. And so we need to do better. We need to continue to diagnose people so that they can link not only to treatment and eventually when everybody's on treatment, incidents will come down, but we also need to really focus on prevention. So testing um, should be seen not only as a way of getting those with HIV onto uh, treatment and, and reducing viral load, but also linking people into preventing services. And where are we with testing? Um, I'm noticing that our um, um, slides are a bit, a, bit, um, a bit dim, so I hope you can see. Um, but as Boutle and I remember from those early days, it was a struggle getting testing out there, and we really tried to drag people um, uh, into testing because there wasn't treatment, and really there was a huge reluctance um, to, uh, to get tested. But as treatment became available, as PMTCT became successful, um, HIV was introduced routinely um, into a, a lot of clinical services, particularly into antenatal. And we witnessed a great um, scale up of, of access to testing, particularly for, um, for women. Um, and then as new community-based um, services, um, we also started to get out of the clinic into the, into the uh, into uh, um, populations that weren't going to clinics, but we're beginning to, to tail off and we really need new approaches. If we're gonna get to this first 90, if we're really going to diagnose um, people um, out there in the communities, we need new approaches and that's why um, we hope that um, self-testing and partner notification will, will help us on that way. As, as Dr. Eggers um, and the Ministry of Health in Kenya noted, um, we still have to diagnose um, those 40% those of people who, who um, remain undiagnosed. And there's great regional variation. Um, in southern and eastern Africa, we're, we're doing well, not, not well enough, but in West Africa and Central Africa, we really have a big struggle. And part of that is because increasingly, um, new infections are occurring amongst key populations. And key populations often f don't um, uh, attend clinical services as readily as general populations. Um, they will need extra support to, uh, to uh, seek testing. And um, um, particularly outside um, uh, um, uh, southern and eastern Africa, um, epidemics are increasingly um, really focused on key populations. And that's particularly true for the countries in West Africa that are represented here. But also in Southern and Eastern Africa, that gap, a lot of that gap is made up of people from key populations. 
as has been mentioned many times, men, men are, um, uh, men have different health-seeking behaviour. We've got men here, so I'm sure they will uh, be able to speak to this. But they don't, they don't really um, attend uh, uh, clinical settings in the way that women do. They don't go to family planning clinics. They don't go to antenatal. They don't take their kids to vaccination. They don't have these opportunities for testing. So we need to go out and reach them. And um, we know even from, from community-based services, you know, from, from door-to-door um, testing, that men, again, often aren't there. They're often at work. We need really to look at ways of, of, of reaching men, and hopefully our new two, two new um, uh, methods of, of testing will really support testing of men. So, in our guidelines, um, which we produced um, in 2015, we made a deliberate effort um, to talk about HIV testing services. I think there's been a whole nomenclature over the years from VCT to PITCT to all sorts of different um, uh, um, uh, ways of describing it. But we um, really wanted to look at um, HIV testing services. Um, testing services in facility, community, and in self-testing. Um, we don't want to stop looking at community, uh, at, at, at facility-based services, and we've done really well in antenatal um, testing. In most countries now, it's offered um, routinely, and the vast majority of women accept, um, and so we have very high diagnosis amongst antenatal women, which has led to um, very significant reductions in uh, mother-to-child transmission and has meant that a great number of women um, start immediate treatment. However, we do still struggle with offering um, HIV t testing routine in other clinical services, in pediatric services, in outpatient um, services, and we really need across the region to make sure that we don't um, uh, limit our efforts on, on uh, testing in, in, in clinics to antenatal. I'm just going to repeat this. Everyone knows it, but I'm still going to repeat it because I think sometimes when we talk about um, new interventions for testing, for self-testing and uh, for partner notification, um, we think we, we don't, we think um, um, that, that maybe these don't necessarily apply in the same way. But consent, confidentiality, counselling, correct test results and connections are all things that must happen whatever we do. Um, Self-testing requires consent. And certainly um, when one talks about testing, self-testing in the community, initially there's a lot of, um, of concern that this could be done in a coercive way. And I think we need to understand that any form of testing must be voluntary and must involve um, the explicit understanding of the person that this is something that they choose to do. And similarly with confidentiality, um, people must be allowed to test um, and be aware that that result is theirs and to share with whoever they want. That doesn't mean to say that sharing results isn't a good thing and we don't want to perpetuate um, secrecy but certainly um, uh, we must support people to disclose to who they want to, when they want to, and how they want to. And both self-testing and partner notification um, give us challenges in that field, which we'll discuss later. Um, we are, in WHO, very, very concerned about um, correct test results. And as we know from many settings, um, there have been problems with um, the way that testing's been done, um, and we really want to minimize false positive and false negative results. Um, and so um, quality assurance is something that we have really focused on um, in WHO. And we have two testing strategies which really have um, been um, developed with a huge amount of work from our colleagues um, in our diagnostics um, team in, in WHO. And if these are followed, this really gives us the best chance <coughs> of minimizing um, false positive results. And we have one testing algorithm um, for above 5%. That's our, um, our high, high prevalence testing strategy. And one for... Um, below 5%. And these are fully outlined both in the testing service guidelines and in um, a policy brief. If there's any questions about that, please let us know. 
And this is something um, that, again, we in WHO in headquarters and in, and in the countries have really helped um, countries um, adapt their own testing strategies to fit in with these. And this um, is a way that has really supported um, a decrease, particularly in false positive results. So in, con in, in my final slide, before I hand over um, to Butelet, I really wanted to say what was particularly our focus in the testing service guidelines. It was really to look at ways that we, we could increase um, um, testing to, to be more strategic at testing the undiagnosed, um, to be more focused. Um, as we all know, we do a lot of testing and each year testing goes up and up and up. And it's a balance between a lot of easy testing, so that's a lot of testing in antenatal clinic, for example, some campaign testing. It's relatively easy to go out and do a big campaign. But you may get, from these type of approaches, um, a low positivity rate. And that balanced against focused testing, focused testing to support testing of key populations, focused testing to support testing of, of uh, index and family members um, through, through partner notification and other, and, and family testing of, of people with HIV. This may be more expensive, but because the positivity rate is much higher, the test per person diagnosed with HIV can be much lower. We also, in, in the guidelines, look at linkage. And um, this is something um, that testing alone without um, linking people with HIV to, uh, to treatment and without supporting those who um, are negative but at high ongoing risk of HIV um, acquisition to, uh, to prevention um, needs to really be focused on to maximize the benefits of testing. And we give lots of examples of ways that we can support this. I think this is still something that is very context specific. We can't give you a, a blueprint to ensure um, a linkage. And I think we also have to recognize it's not always going to be perfect. And um, not having perfect linkage doesn't mean we should continue with approach. Somebody knowing their status earlier, they may not link today, they may not link tomorrow, they may not link in, uh, in the next couple of months. But knowing your status um, will support linkage earlier than not knowing your status. And finally, as I said, um, the quality of testing, whatever that um, uh, method is, is something that is very, very key. And we've done two things. We've supported the quality improvement of countries in their testing to um, adopt the correct strategies. But we've also um, uh, had a recommendation, which, was, which, is, which has been in, in WZO's those, um, recommendations for many, many years, but we reiterated that. Because we are concerned about false positive um, uh, testing, often due to uh, errors and uh, um, and transcription errors and mix up with samples, etc. not because of the following of the testing strategies, we recommend that everybody who newly starts on, on treatment um, should be retested to make sure that they really have HIV before starting on lifelong treatment.